Hello, everyone, and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. Glad that you've joined us today. Please take time to share this out to others because the information today is going to be very valuable as we talk about perception and deception. There is no doubt that we are living in an atmosphere where lies are propagating themselves and massive deception on a scale like we've never seen before is happening. And the Bible predicted that it would take place in the last days prior to the coming of Jesus Christ. So in recent hours, this has been released that Facebook's CEO says that censorship happened during the Biden-Harris administration pressure. What took place, according to this article, is that there was repeated pressure put on the teams of Facebook to censor certain COVID-19 content, uh, along with uh, the Hunter Biden laptop story and uh, multiple other things, according to what this article references and the letter that was sent from the owner, CEO of Facebook, to uh, Senator Jim Jordan. So what does that have to do with the Bible in the last days? Well, perception is a very powerful thing. Uh, sometimes we look at something on television or hear something, and suddenly our mind already has the idea that this is true or that it is false without any investigation. And most of the time, people are operating off of their feelings rather than facts and truth. That's why it's so important that we understand about perception and how it leads to deception. Your perception is probably the worst possible evidence for reality. In fact, the definition of itself for perception is awareness of the elements of environment through physical sensation. In other words, using your five senses in order to determine what is true, what is uh, wrong, what is evil, what is good, all of this is just making it aware through your senses. It's a different, um, a different act, a different uh, take, rather than taking the truth of God's word, for instance, or researching what is true, and then coming up with a definite uh, answer to what is taking place, rather than just our uh, feelings or our perception based upon our senses. What happens is if you continue to move in a a place with false perceptions, it moves you into deception. And deception, by definition, is the act of causing someone to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. Exactly what took place in Genesis chapter number three. The perception was is that it would be all right for Eve to take the fruit and offer it to her husband, uh, Adam. And then uh, that deception went even further as the serpent that was there in the garden deceiving Eve, uh, allowed and continued to propagate the lie that God would not uh, cause them to die if they ate of the fruit. In fact, he even went even further, Satan did in the garden, uh, to tell them that you wouldn't die. In fact, God is afraid that if you take this, that you'll become like God. You will be God. That deception was what cast them out of the garden, and sin came in, and death by that, and as a result, we've been in a fallen state of mankind ever since. Only one sinless man has ever come to this earth, and that is Jesus Christ. He is truth. He is the Word of God. And that's why true discernment is always supported by the Word of God. It's very easy and very quick that deception can take place to replace truth. For instance, in uh, the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Joshua, how that they were going in or about to go in to uh, the promised land, the children of Israel were, and they sent spies into the land. They came back with a report, a news report, if you will. 10 of them said that there's giants and uh, enemies and we look like grasshoppers in their sight. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb said, we can take the land like God said. As a result, the mass believed those evil reports, as the Bible says, and they did not enter into the promised land, but wound up circling the wilderness for another 40 years while that whole generation died off that believed the lie. I want you to understand that human perception over God's word will absolutely lead you into deception. And God wants you to understand that in order for you to be able to live victorious, you must do what the Bible says, walk by faith and not by sight. The manipulation of our senses 
that leads to deception is what has taken hold of our land even right now. People being affected by what they see, smell, touch, hear. Uh, these perceptions are causing people to just take at face value or perhaps from some uh, social media post, some meme, uh, the idea that this is true or this is false without even the investigation of whether or not it is or not. Until our minds are completely renewed, our perception will be absolutely distorted. That's the reason why the book of Romans reminds us, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove and be able to understand even what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. Perception without knowledge is what leads us to rumors, and rumors, uh, we can find out very quickly, is what is uh, the precursor to deception. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, for the time will come when they won't endure sound doctrine. We're living in that time right now. But after their own lust, they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they'll turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Today, we are finding out, and it's not just in the church world, please don't limit it to the spiritual church world, but in our world entirely, we are listening more and more and hearing more and more fables. And without checking it out through the word of God, there is no way to tell what is right and what is wrong. Deception becomes rampant in our time. That's the reason why it's important for us to be able to heed the word of God. And let me make it very clear to you as we take the last few moments before uh, we sign off today. It is actually two different elements that God has put in place for us to be able to have a clear understanding of what truth is. And that is, number one, the word of God. John 17, 17, thy word is truth. So there's an absolute there that you can go back to. And I can assure you that the word of God has the answer to every issue that is known to man. The Bible contained in the word of God, if you will search for it, and many people look for all of the thou shalt nots, thou shalt not smoke, thou shalt not wear shoes, whatever that it may be. You're not gonna find that in the word of God, but what you will find is the truth of God's word that is, is uh, bringing us to principles from God's word and promises to God's word that will help us have a clear understanding of our moral economic, uh, the climate of the world, our environment that we live in, how we should live as human beings, how we should conduct ourselves as Christians, it's all contained in the Word of God. The answer to everything is in the Word of God. And secondly, because He allows us to be able to have the helper in the Holy Spirit to come alongside us right now, when Jesus went away, He prayed the Father and the Holy Spirit, the same Christ, the same spirit that dwelled in Jesus Christ, now dwells in us as believers. If you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you and actively guiding you into all truth, as the Bible says in John 16, then what do you have to guide you to truth? The news and uh, social media and everything else is pressuring and bombarding us every day with its perception that if you're not careful will lead to deception. So what are some things that we need to do? Well, we need to humble ourselves and recognize that we don't know it all, that we need God's help. Secondly, we need to receive what the Bible calls the love of the truth. In 2 Thessalonians 2, it tells us that's one of the indicators that a person is falling into deep deception when they will not receive the love of the word of God. They don't love the word of God to the degree that they'll study it and find out what truth is. Third, we need to have the fear of the Lord, the reverence of God in this hour, because there are many evil things that are taking place in our world today, and only Jesus Christ can save us from this chaotic world that we're in by giving us peace and the joy that we truly have in Christ Jesus. And then, of course, keeping our faith centrally focused in Jesus Christ and Him crucified at the cross. At that location, everything else pales in comparison. You recognize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. I want to encourage you today, whatever you do, to follow and stay close to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that will lead you and guide you into all truth, give you the principles of God's word on how to live in this very evil day that we're living in. And I can assure you that no matter what may come your way, what you're listening to on the news or anything else, 
It can't be skewed because the word of God and truth will live on the inside of your heart and reveal the lie very clearly. These are the last days and Jesus Christ, no doubt, is about to return. The only question is, are you ready? If you're not ready for the next great event on the calendar of God, the return of Jesus Christ at the rapture, then I can let you know that it is time for you to get your house in order, to get your life and your family and those you love into Jesus Christ and knowing him as your personal Lord and Savior. It's very simple. All you've got to do is just ask him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, place your faith exclusively in what he did at the cross by faith, and then get up and live a life by the grace of God that's pleasing to him and dig into the word of God. The word will tell you how to live. I encourage you to do that today. It'll be the best decision that you've ever made. Till the next time we get together around God's word, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.